Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magical Maven. My name is Heather, and today is a pick a card reading for singles on who is your next relationship, partnership, and or love coming in. So this isn't about um, just casually dating. This is, you know, actually about a relationship, partnership, and or love. So a significant connection. So um, choose a pile, um, one through seven. And if you're drawn to multiple piles, you could always pick more than one. If you do pick a pile and it doesn't resonate, feel free to choose another. And um, the cards that I'm using today are the Chakra Wisdom Tarot, the Romance Angels, the Lover's Oracle, and the Oracle of the Mermaids, and the Black Moon Astrology cards. So first, um, we are going to jump in to Pile 1. Okay, so for my pile number one, people, we have transformation. Your relationship with one another is about to deepen. Love conquers and transforms all things. <coughs> the next card we has, ha have is a message for you. I'm thinking of you this very moment. Your love fills me with light. I love you. And it's interesting because before I would was um meaning to shuffle for pile one this card came out and i put it down and then i was like no i'm gonna shuffle it again and then when i asked for a second card for this pile this card came out again so this message is for sure for pile number one again it's a message for you i'm thinking of you this very moment your love fills me with light i love you and from the chakra wisdom tarot we have the queen of cups We have the Ace of Cups and the Devil card. And I'm going to explain everything after I lay them all out. We have the Romance Angels. We have Stay Optimistic About Your Love Life. Religious Factors. Your love life is being influenced by your religious path, upbringing, and spiritual path. Release your ex. The time has come to clear your energy. Reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning from your life. Okay, and from the Oracle of the Mermaids, we have Song of the Siren, the call, summoning, voice, to acknowledge. Okay, and then for possible signs that your love or partnership partner could be, we got from the Black Moon Tarot, or Black Moon Oracle, sorry, we have Taurus or Scorpio. Okay. So first, I'm going to explain the astrology. <coughs> so with the astrology, um, I did ask for your, you know, partner or person you'll be in a relationship with or, you know, your love coming in. So Taurus or Scorpio, um, which is interesting because Taurus and Scorpio are opposites. Um, you know, each sign does have an opposite sign. So um, it either can mean that your person is one of these signs. However, it could just mean that they have this in their chart. So what I mean by that is when someone asks your sun sign, oh, when someone asks for your sign, that's just your sun sign. But that doesn't mean that this has to be their sun. It could be like a rising, meaning that um, your rising is how you come across to others. So maybe they seem like a Scorpio or seem like a Taurus, even if they're not one of these, or they could have it in, you know, one of the main influences in their chart. So take what resonates, but Taurus and Scorpio are the two that came through. Okay. So what I'm getting from the Song of the Siren is that you are calling to your person. And what I mean by that is when you are in your authentic self, when you're living your truth, you're living your passion, you're happy on your own, um, that is actually calling in your true partner. So it's, um, you know, like a beacon almost. You know, because once you're ready within to really make room for the love of your life, you know, you will call them in. So that's what I'm getting from this card. And I don't know, like, for those of you who watch my other videos, um, I do updates for Twin Flames and or Lightworkers for the month and for the full, each full moon. So if you are a Twin Flame, there is a blog by Cassidy Kane, and she talks about your soul song. 
And um, so this could also resonate for you twin flames out there. Okay, so I know I asked for your love, your future partner coming, but there is this energy of someone from your past um, because obviously between the Romance Angel cards and the Lover's Oracle cards. Um, so for some of you, again, this is a collective reading, so everyone's going to maybe be a little differently. Um, for some of you, you do have someone from your past that you do need to let go of. And this person from your past coming back, coming in your life, it could be it could be about someone you know, but maybe there's two people showing up. Like there's this ex you need to release and there's this reconciliation from another person from your past. So for some of you that this is showing there's someone from your past you need to let go of and there's someone from your past returning that things are going to deepen with and transform with. And that's the per, you know person who's, you know, loves you or is thinking about you um, or is very fond of you if it's not love yet. Um, for those of you who it's just about one person, this releasing your ex energy is about you need to release maybe what has happened in the past with them or release the idea of, you know, timelines or, you know, are we or aren't we going to be together or work out? So it's more about, you know, like when, when they say if you love someone or love something, set it free. It's kind of about if this is just about one person, this is about you kind of need to let go of the person and sense of not let go of them as like I'm done with them, but let go of them and see if, you know, if they're really, um, see if they return to you, you know, let them go with love and, you know, live your own life. And, you know, and then if they're meant to come back, they will. So, so for those of you, this is about one person. It's about like letting them go with love. And if they come back, then, you know, then things could be stronger. And, you know, that could be that transformation that's coming up. And then for some of you, it's about, okay, the, yeah, there's someone from your past you need to release. And then you could reconcile with this other person from your past. And for some of you, this releasing of your ex it might not even be someone that you feel emotionally tied to. It could just be like energetically where you need to do some clearing and some cord pulling. And um, once you do that like energetic clearing, that's going to help you because it might not even be, you know, you're like, oh, I don't know who you're talking about. It could be that, oh, it's just a matter of clearing these past energies because if you've never had any clearing work done, if you've never done any cord pulling, then you're going to need to do so <laughs> because they're those people, you know, exes could still be in your energy field. They could, you know, you know, and if you feel attachment to them, it could be because of that or they're feeling attached to you and, you know, so on. But, um, but there definitely is for this pile a releasing that needs to be done of the past of a, with an ex or, you know, multiple exes and not that, it, you know, multiple has to be a large number. It could be, you know, two, three, whatever. And Okay, so with the timing of things, it is because of this card about, like, your spiritual path. There's things that you're meant to go through, things that you need to sort out or, you know, work through. And, you know, you kind of need to go on it on your own or, you need, or and in some cases, you've had other relationships or people that have come in. And maybe that's why this past person hasn't worked out yet because you've had other lessons to learn. You've had, you know, karma to clear. You've had, you know, to work at certain things and that's kind of, so things are working divine timing, but there's other things that you've had to go through like trials and, you know, and it could be for the, you know, probably for that person too. So just know that, you know, things are happening, have happened for a reason and are, and that this is why you're getting to stay optimistic about your love life. Because if you're feeling like, why have things that have not happened? Um, you just kind of need to have trust and like hope that things will fall into place when they're meant to. And this is why you got the devil card. This is about like, I guess maybe your addiction to like really focusing on this person. And that's why I think for a lot of you, this is probably this person that might be even the one that's coming back. Not so much someone from the past you need to let go of. Again, you know, there's still... That could be that energy clearing that you just need to do for past exes. But I really get that this devil card is about releasing this person to have this, you know, reconciliation with. And if you're hooked to or chained to 
you know, thinking about this person, you know, you know, wondering when and why and how and what's going on. It's like you're stuck in this, you know, addiction in a sense of that, you know. Um, and with the Ace of Cups, it's like this new love coming in. And, you know, this is obviously for you guys about renewed love coming in. And I feel like you feel like you've been ready for a while. Like you feel emotionally, you know, you've been ready for love. And it's not to say you're not, but it just might, again, it's like you have other things that have been working. And then also there's things working behind the scenes. So um, don't get so caught up in the hows and the whens and the whys. Um, just release what you need to and don't be so chained to this person because also it's about like a lesson in detachment because if you feel even if this is someone that you do have love for and this could be like a powerful love connection attachment and love are two different things so if you're attached to this person you're not in the right vibration to have a loving harmonious connection if that makes sense so that's just something to think about um but this is my pile one people um, so do you have hope? Know that, you know, this person, um, you know, from your past um, is also thinking you, of you as well. Um, but you need to do your work in the meantime um, to help make this happen. And once you are doing, you know, clearing out when you need to, once you have that hope, once you're happy on your own, you're going to be calling them in. And then that's when things are going to fall into place. And, um, and I know, and I'm getting that a lot of you will probably be like, oh, when? But again, this is something that you need to not be worried about the timing. It's the timing's not important. It's how things come together and they can and will, but you, you know, you need to get out of your own way. Um, and you know, um, and then just take what advice res you resonate with. So I hope that makes sense. So that's my pile number one people. I just shook the camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so my pile number two people. So we have, oh, I'm going to pull this one first because this is the first one came out. It says, secret admirer, someone has deeper feelings for you than they are letting on. And then when I pulled a clarification card, it says only time will tell. From the Chakra Wisdom Tarot, we have the Five of Wands, the Queen of Coins, and the Three of Swords. From the Romance Angels, we have Love Yourself First, Romantic Feelings, and Give Your Relationship a Chance. Okay. From the Oracle of the Mermaids, we have Time and Tide, Ocean ex um, Spells and Rituals. And from the Black Moon Astrology Cards, um, we have Gemini and Aquarius. Okay, so now um, getting in. So the Astrology Cards I pulled to see who your possible partner or love coming in, what sign they might be. Um, so Gemini and Aquarius are both air signs. So it could be Gemini or Aquarius, or it could be even Libra, since that's another air sign. Um, when people ask what your sun sign is, or your sign is, that's just your sun sign. So even if, um, so if you are into astrology, you might want to look deeper to see what else is in the person's chart um, in the future, because maybe they have, you know, air sign, you know, heavily in their chart, or they have Gemini or Aquarius in one of their other major placements, you know, like the rising or the moon. So just take what resonates. Um, again, it doesn't have to be by their sun sign for one of these. And it could just be maybe they have like that air sign mentality, you know, very communicative, um, you know, very much a thinker. Okay, so <clears throat> with the secret admirer and only time will tell. So I think it's about someone maybe that either... Again, this is a collective reading, so everyone will kind of differ, but it's probably someone you've maybe went on a date with or have dated kind of here and there or are dating. Um, or you could maybe even 
have been with them before, but maybe you had fallen out of love or felt, you know, you kind of like your feelings kind of maybe went away for whatever reason. So take what resonates because this could have, you know, it could have been, it could have varied, you know, but either way, it's someone I think that most of you already know. It's just with the secret admirer, it's not, you know, they're not secret. It's more just that you don't know the intensity of their feelings. And <clears throat> there will be some of you that maybe don't know this person yet. Um, or, you know, in the sense of you don't know that they have a crush on you. So some of you will, you know, it will be someone that you haven't been involved with yet, but it's, you know, they have a crush on you and you don't know it. So some of you will have that. So again, just take what resonates. But um, with this person, you're kind of not sure. And it is showing that romantic feelings are there. And maybe, you, you know, maybe to you, you feel like it's one-sided, meaning like, Either you're like, okay, you know, you know, later on, you'll kind of realize that their feelings are true or it's, you know, maybe you had feelings for them or, you know, do, but it's just, you're not sure that they feel the same. So you kind of have had a guard up because with give your relationship a chance. So yeah, you're kind of guarded. You're kind of not sure about this person and maybe it's because they haven't opened up. So, you know, you don't want to get your heart broken, which makes what I, you know, and I was just saying that and then I looked at this, the three of swords, which is the heart, card of heartbreak and loss. So you're kind of maybe like, you know, maybe you don't want to give it a shot because you're really not sure how they feel. And so you don't even, maybe you haven't even allowed yourself to feel because you have a guard up because you just don't even want to chance it is what I'm getting. And, and you know, with the love yourself first, um, it is showing before, you know, that person comes in or things could work out. You do need to love yourself first um, because if you're not happy with yourself, you, you know, you're not going to be happy with anyone else. So that is something like a barrier that you have to deal with first, um, making yourself happy, being happy within. Um, because, I mean, honestly, like, if you're happy with yourself, even if you, you know, are trying to date someone and doesn't work out, even if it's, you know, even if you did have feelings for them and it's hard, you know, you're still going to have that happiness within, if that makes sense. And for some of you might be like, I don't know what you're talking about, Heather. <laughs> but no, like, if you really love yourself and, you know, if you're trying to give, you know, date someone, give it a shot and you have feelings and it doesn't work out, you know, you're going to be okay because you're good with you. So, um, okay. And then it shows with the five wands. So maybe you have had a have you have had a tough time in the past and that's kind of made you reluctant because with the queen of coins. So, I mean, you could be a female watching this. You could be a male watching this. You know, the queen could be either female or male. Um, with the queen of coins, I mean, this is the pentacle energy, which is, you know, associated with the earth element. You know, so you value security and stability and dependability and consistency. So for you, like, that's why you could be guarded because sometimes, you know, you know, you don't want to give it away. You don't want to give your heart away because it's not logical to you, if that makes sense. And you maybe have been burned before and in some situations maybe you haven't seen people's true colors so that's why you're maybe a little reluctant and you're like um do I really want to deal with this because I've already gone through this energy and it was not pleasant but you know you can't let that stop you you know and okay and then this makes sense too so with what I was getting about with the Gemini and Aquarius and I said even if they're not an air sign but they, you know, if they are very much a thinker, that could be what's throwing you off too. Because if you're in your HUD and they're in your their HUD, you know, you're both in your HUDs and you're not able to express your feelings, and then neither one of you know what to do with the either, and you know, you can't really give it a chance because neither of you has really an open heart or is willing to express it. If that makes sense. So, oh, okay, and I'm getting you're waiting for the tide to roll in. So whether you're in the situation now or will be, 
you know, you might be just waiting on this other person. Oh, and it, see how she's drawing the heart? It's like, yeah, so then, and I mean, they could be waiting on you too. And it's like this thing where things might never happen because you're both waiting for the other one to maybe confess. So take what resonates, but um, just know that if there is someone like this you're involved with, that you need to be more open and give it a chance and, you know, maybe, and it's okay to let your guard down a bit and it's okay to see where things go, but you need to have more of an open heart and you also do need to, you know, first and foremost, you need to love yourself first. And if you, you know, if you need to, you know, just let this person know that, you know, you you know, you do care about them and you are kind of, you know, just working on yourself, you know, and you want to see things work where they go and take it slow. Whatever you need to communicate. I mean, communication is key. So, so that is your reading for pile number two. So I hope that resonated. Take what does. And if you feel drawn to another pile or you feel this didn't resonate with your situation, um, again, this, you know, if it's not right now, it could be in the future. So, but you know, you're free to choose another pile if you like. So now pile number three. <coughs> so we have trust. Transformation occurs through acceptance. Once you accept the current situation, it will automatically transform. We have criticizing one another will only lead to further unhappiness. Love and accept each other as you are and your relationship will magically transform. And then we have for the Chakra Wisdom Tarot, we have the Four of Swords, the Fool, the Eight of Wands, and Temperance. Okay, so this is funny because I just shot a video on a pick a card for chakra healing. So if you have not watched that, please do so because there is a pile where these cards came out for one of the piles. So if you watch that video and you get these cards twice, you are really meant to hear this message. <laughs> I'm gonna continue I'm laying out the other cards first though. Okay, from the Romance Angels, we have Soulmate, Passion, and this could be the one. And I would like to note that a bunch of cards popped out, but um, I only wanted three for each. And these were the, the soulmate came out first. And then when a bunch came out, the two that I saw and was drawn to was the passion. This could be the one. Okay. And then we have from the mermaid, soul cage, rescue, escape from captivity and restriction. And from the black moon astrology cards, we have the air element, the water element, and the fire element. Okay. So I'm gonna explain um, those first. So from the Black Moon Astrology cards, I pulled out all the astrology signs and the elements to see maybe what your future partner or love, you know, what sign they might be. And when people ask what your sign is, that's just your sun sign, but you have other influences in your chart. Um, since you didn't get a particular sign, you got three out of four elements. Um, your person could be a fire sign, an air sign, or a water sign. And again, it doesn't have to mean um, about their sun sign, it could be maybe their energy. So maybe, you know, they're, you know, a feeler, you know, maybe they're, a, you know, a communicator, a thinker, maybe they're very enthusiastic and motivated, or maybe they're a combination of these energies. So take what resonates. Okay. So your next relationship, partnership, love, it is with a soulmate. And Again, this could be the one for you. So this is a, you know, a potential person that you might, you know, end up um, being with, um, you know, whether that's for the rest of your life or, you know, you settle down with them for, you know, a while, whether you move in, you get married. Um, you know, I don't like to go out too far into the future because, you know, it's more, I always think that it's you know, the present in your future, you know, when doing readings as opposed to way far out because so many things could change. But I do want to point out this soulmate could be a very good match for you, could be the one. And again, it's could. So, you know, don't necessarily, you know, take what resonates for you because it could be, or maybe it's someone that you might feel is. And, you know, I mean, it could be an, one of your 
soulmates or, you know, and I mean, there's different levels of soulmates. So this could be a higher soulmate for you. And there is a passion or, you know, will be. So whether, you know, you know them or not. Um, okay. <coughs> so sorry, I'm just trying to put it all together. Okay, because in the other pile reading, it was very much about career. So, but I'm not going to take that into this one. Okay, so pretty much with your energies right now, there's a, maybe a lot that you're doing. And, and this is require, requiring like rest from you because, you know, four of swords you need some rest relaxation time um and also with the green that is the heart chakra so there might be still lingering things that need to be dealt with and maybe you've kind of skimmed past them because sometimes when people think oh i've healed from a certain situation it's not that they've healed it's just maybe they have accepted and they don't feel the pain like they once did but it's not that they really healed from it um, so kind of dive deep, like if you feel, oh, you know, this happened and, oh, I'm okay with it now, but, oh, you know, have you actually healed from it is the question. So you might have to think about that because with the soul cage card, there is maybe this, you know, you feel like trapped or caged. There is this like heavy energy and you need to release that to be able to things for able to work with your soulmate for to you know to call in the soulmate and and with this criticizing one another you know if you've been in kind of a low vibration or feeling low energy because also okay so one thing i'm going to say is like this energy before about being overworked um and some of that is your own doing is what I was getting and again take what resonates but with the eight of wands there's this fast rapid pace movement and this go 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 and with this temperance it's like maybe cautioning to like slow down take things with ease and this is why you're getting this needing for rest with this full energy there is this new beginning coming but how are you going to even be able to see it if you're too much on the go and and you're not allowing yourself to take the time to heal your wounds. And I'm also hearing bury the hatchet. So you might have some forgiveness to do. There might be some like resentment you're harboring. And this is this dark energy that, or this, you know, where you're trapping yourself is because, you know, maybe there's someone from your past that you have not forgived and you have this resentment and you fi finally need to just bury that hatchet for yourself. And that doesn't mean that you necessarily need to like call them up and make amends. I mean, maybe for some of you, you do, but, um, you know, you could forgive them with them being afar and forgiveness doesn't mean that you allow someone to treat you, you know, poorly, you know, I mean, especially, I mean, if this is someone out of your life, but it's like for, you know, if you heard the saying forgiveness isn't for the other person, it's for you. So if you, you know, this person is probably you know, might not, you know, is not losing, most likely isn't losing sleep about what they did to you. And even if they are, that's, you know, not your responsibility, but, you know, you need to think about yourself and you need to, you know, is it worth keeping yourself caged and trapped and feeling this lower energy? Or is it worth releasing that pain and forgiving that person regardless of what they did? And that's not to say that you're going to let them back in your life. That's just to say, hey, I forgive you. I send you you know, love and light, you know, thank you for the lessons. Thank you, you know, but I'm moving on. And, and then you can call in the soulmate. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and this is maybe where the trust is coming in too, because if you're holding in this energy, you might feel like, again, you could be attracting partners again like that. And you don't need to go through that energy again, but you need to kind of rise above it and make your way to the light. And once you do, 
you could trust knowing you, you have to trust in yourself. So if you did go through like, you know, a hard time in the past in love and, and you're like, and you're not trusting, that could be something too, why you're staying stuck because you'd rather just stay caged than allowing yourself the chance to love again or to be in a relationship again because you just don't trust it. Um, so, you know, really, um, like I said, you know, you need to, um, allow yourself some, you know, rest, you need to slow down, um, you need to let go of any resentments, you need to forgive, and, um, and just kind of trust in yourself, trust in the process of life, and, and know that you, you know, you have someone coming in, but you, you need to do the work first, and, um, and, you know, that's not just for this pile, I mean, you know, for anybody, I mean, if, you know, you're wanting to attract a partner and you're wanting love to come in and it's not working, chances are, you know, you have some blocks somewhere or there's things that you still need to deal with and work on or go through. And, you know, that's, you know, I'm not saying that from judgment. I'm just saying that from a place of truth. And, um, you know, and, and so to take what I say from a place of love, um, I'm really just trying to help you. I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything bad about, you know, you that, you know, because it's, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, for anybody, like if they've gone through a destructive relationship, a toxic relationship, you know, or someone, you know, did things to you and, you know, it's, it could, yeah, it could be hard to forgive. It could be hard to release and move on and trust again. So, um, so my, you know, I have compassion for you and just know that, you know, you could do, if you do your work, you do have a soulmate coming. So that's very beautiful and positive. So I hope you will take what I said to heart. And if you feel like this pile um, didn't resonate with you, feel free to choose another. If you feel there's more messages and another pile to call to you as well. And again, this could be something coming in. So, um, I mean, granted the first part um, about what you're working on, um, if that resonated, then, you know, the second part, you know, should as well. Okay, so now on to the next. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm like trying to remember what number I'm on. <laughs> Two, three. So I think I'm on pile number four. Yeah, okay. okay. I only have so much space on the table, so I'm trying to like put them to the side and then they're all in a pile. So I know, I, I'll get more organized. But um, okay. So pile number four. So you also have a soulmate coming in. It says your soulmate is already with you in spirit. Believe this and they will manifest physically. Embrace. Through each other you find the missing pieces. Okay, I'm getting that some of you are already with this person or already kind of like involved with them. And it's not going to be for everybody, but some of you already are. Okay, so the... Chakra wisdom cards we have is Chariot, Empress, and those were the first two that I remember coming out. And then I asked for one more, but three more came out, so I went with it. We have the King of Swords, the Knight of Swords, and the Hanged Woman. Okay, so we have the Romance Angels. We have Very Soon, Attraction, New Love. And from the or uh, Oracle of the Mermaids, we have falling in love, kissing the divine in another and yourself. Okay, so far this is a very promising pile. <laughs> and then I did the Black Moon Astrology cards. I pulled um, the different signs. So when people ask what your sign is, that's just your sun sign. So either take these as it could be their sun sign or it could be a main influence in their chart you know, like their moon or rising or Venus, or it could just maybe be an energy that they embody. So the three cards we got, we have Virgo, I analyze, Capricorn, I use, and Cancer, I feel. So with Virgo and Capricorn, so um, the earth energy, so even Taurus could be a possibility. So Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. Um, and if they're not one of these signs, they could embody an earth energy, you know, maybe, you know, they're very stable and grounded, dependable. And with the Cancer, that's a water sign. And it's interesting because Capricorn and Cancer are polar opposites. 
So take what resonates, but the Virgo, Capricorn, and Cancer are the three astrology signs that came out. Okay. So you already know you got the soulmate card and embrace. So this is a powerful connection coming in for your next relationship, your next love, and you have the falling in love card. And it does show very soon for timing. And don't be, you know, held up on the timing, but just know that for some of you, um, it could, you know, happen sooner than you had anticipated. So even if this is, you know, later this year, for example, and that's just an example, um, you know, maybe for some of you, you really didn't plan for even that soon. Maybe some of you are working on certain things and you, you know, haven't even really thought about love too much, but you know, maybe you saw this video and you were drawn to it and you're like, oh, why not? You know, kind of thing is what I'm getting for some of you. And yeah, with attraction, um, you know, with what I said earlier is what I was picking up. Some of you already are with this person or dating them or involved with them. So some of you, this very soon could be, it's like, because things have moved fast and it's like, and maybe very soon you'll actually have like a co actual commitment or fall in love. Like you've already been involved with them and this is the very soon could be about the actual, you know, coming together, you know, as in a relationship commitment, falling in love, and you've already kind of been involved or dating and you have this, you know, strong attraction to them. So whether it's someone coming or it's someone you already know and yeah, getting new love. So this is definitely someone new. Um, and I mean, if for those of you who maybe have known this person already, it might just be like you never were involved with them before. So it's a new love because it wasn't like someone you had already loved or had a relationship with before. Um, with the two cards that came out first with the Empress and Chariot, I did ask for another one. And like I said, the three came out. So the Empress, this is like this loving maternal energy, like this divine feminine energy in the chariot. So again, the, um, if you watch some of my other videos, um, divine feminine, divine masculine, that doesn't mean that the divine feminine has to be in a female body. It could be a female body, a male body. Um, so, you know, take what resonates for you. But with the chariot, these th things are moving along. And remember how I said, like, some of you might not even see it coming because you didn't even anticipate to be, like, in love or be in a relationship anytime soon? Like, look how she's, like, this, you know, carriage and horse are coming at her and she's kind of, like, not even paying attention. She's not even looking that way. And that's kind of what I'm being drawn to. Is, like, you, you know, we're thinking about other things, focused on other things, and then your chariot awaits. Um, all right. For some of you, you might've been hung up on a past partner. So with this King of Swords, Knight of Swords energy, um, but I don't feel like it's like a huge block on you. It's kind of like, maybe for some of you, it's that you haven't been in a relationship in a while or you haven't been in love in a while. And for a long time it was because you had an idea of someone. And it's not that maybe you're even hung up anymore, but maybe it's like, you know, this person from so long ago has just been in your mind or your memory because that's all you have to refer back to. So, and maybe some people around you or you yourself even, you know, get this idea of being hung up on them, but it's not that you're hung up on them. It's just maybe it's been a long time since you've been in a relationship or been in love that this is kind of what you refer back to. And that's maybe too why you're, you know, you don't see it coming because you've been single for a while that you're kind of like, at this point, you just kind of like gave up really trying to wait, which is a positive because we shouldn't be waiting around for someone. We should be happy you know, without a partner. Um, so that's kind of what I'm getting that because these were like, these were the main cards. And this was kind of the underlining. So I think for some of you, you've just been single for a while. And, um, and then also that past person, because um, with the swords, that's air energy. And if you looked at, you know, like, the signs you got with the earth and the water, you know, maybe this new love, this new partner is very different than the past partner you had that you would refer back to 
but I think it's in a positive way because maybe they didn't fulfill your needs. Um, you know, because an air sign is very different than an earth or a water. So I think this is a very positive thing and that's, you know, you're going to like that about them and that's what you're going to be really attracted to. And this is maybe what this embrace comes in. Maybe, you know, you really maybe want someone who's a feeler and who's affectionate and maybe this past person was not like that at all. So maybe this is why you're going to end like, oh, I'm, I'm just now being drawn to how they're like embracing so I think this person coming in is going to be really positive and good for you and is going to take you by surprise. So that is my pile number four people. So take what resonates and if you feel drawn to another pile or you feel that this doesn't resonate with you, feel free to pick another one. Um, of course, this could be coming in the near future. So if it's not happening now, just, you know, maybe, you know, Make a mental note and then, you know, if it happens, it happens. Okay. So my pile number five people. Okay. So we have don't make decisions based on guilt or what you think you should do for it is only in being true to yourself that you can be true to others. Okay, I'm getting guilt complex. And then playfulness. Laughter is the best therapy. Have some fun together and remember love is the greatest healer. Okay. From the Chakra Wisdom Tarot, we have Queen of Swords. We have the High Priestess. We have the Emperor. And the Hierophant. The Romance Angels, we have Make the Effort, Deception, and Trust. Okay, let's put these here. The Oracle of the Mermaids, we have Air, Breathing Deep, Entering into Life, Exchange of Life, Bringing Energies. And from the Black Moon Astrology cards, I pulled a couple cards to see what sign your, your partner or love might be. Um, so we have Leo and Aries. So when people ask your sign, that's just your sun sign. So um, this could be even their moon, rising, Venus, um, or it could just maybe be the energy they embody. Um, Leo and Aries are both fire signs. So um, your person could be a fire sign or, you know, have a very fiery personality. Um, the other fire sign is also Sagittarius. So take what resonates, but they could have Aries, Leo, or possibly Sagittarius in their chart. Okay, so for this pile, I think some of you might already have be in this relationship. And for some of you, it might be like one where you're not sure to get out or not or how to get out. And maybe that's where that guilt is coming from. Okay, what I'm getting is that this partnership, connection, relationship is meant to open doors for you. So, and I don't, I didn't necessarily think it meant career-wise. I think like doors as in, sometimes, you know, there's a partner that we need to come in to help us clear or heal for you know who later we're gonna bring in so I think for some of you like you feel stuck um but you're stuck it's like kind of you know at your own hand because yeah like you need to kind of see things through and maybe you know that is you know ending things or maybe just working on them further because you still have more things to go through together or karma to clear or lessons to learn and this is why it's like make the effort but there are some walls up and then also if like there's a deception like those masks that are up you know if you're wearing a mask if they're wearing a mask and and you you know if you feel you can't trust in another confide in each other and you know that's not healthy so i mean i do think that this person is in your life for a reason 
you know, do I think that it's something, someone you're meant to be with in the long run? Um, for most of you, I don't. Um, again, you know, take what resonates. Um, I mean, this could, you know, maybe this is a person for you. It's just maybe this is like a hump you have to get through. Um, I mean, this is a collective reading. So again, take what resonates. But I feel it's like you're both on your sides. You know, you're on your side, they're on their side. And there's like no middle ground. If that makes sense is what I'm getting. And you both kind of have to come together. And neither one of you is maybe making the move. And again, this isn't for everyone. This is for some of you. And for some of you, maybe... Yeah, because I think a lot of you, it's like on both parties. And there might be some of you, it's just you. You know, maybe... Um, or it's, you know, vice versa them. So it could, you know, it could be, you know, either. It could either be both of you. It could be one of you. So take what resonates. And with this playfulness, um, I'm getting, it's like, you have to ask yourself, what energy do you want to embody? Do you want to be in this like tough place or do you want to try to get through it? So with that playfulness, that laughter is the best medicine, have some fun. That's trying to shift your energy. And with this air card, because when you think of like the element of air, air is a very, you know, it's um, a communicative sign. It's a very much a thinking sign. You know, it's not known for, you know, having energies of emotion or feeling, you know, even though this is, you know, a mermaid, mermaid duck and here's the water. So I feel it's like you both could be, have that energy and then also you could both be stubborn. Especially if, you know, your person is a Aries or a Leo, I mean... And I'm getting watch out, like, you know, in a sense of maybe, like, you both could be, like, that, like, power struggles. But then, like, maybe you have, like, this passion there. And, of course, fire signs are, you know, passionate, are passionate signs. So maybe it's this love and hate relationship, even, is what I'm getting. So take what resonates, but you have to see things through and see your way out and whether that's, you know, make, you know, make, trying to make things work together or that's, you know, trying to resolve things in some manner and then you could decide one way or another whether you want to continue along in this partnership or you want to release and let go. But right now there is a lot to kind of be worked out. And I mean, it could be and it could be sorted quickly or, you know, maybe it's just something small, but it's really like. Yeah, there's definitely just they have this wall. And I think too, when I saw the deception card, because this is a singles rating. So if you are watching this and you are already in a relationship, you know, this is a singles rating, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, this could even be about you, like, and I'm, you know, I'm not saying this with judgment. I'm just saying this. You know, I, you know, do sometimes call things out. I am a Sagittarius. We are a very honest sign. Um, but yeah, if you're watching this for, you know, being a single and you're in a relationship, you need to think like, you know, why when I'm supposed to be in a relationship or I supposedly love someone, why am I seeking out who's coming in or a singles reading, you know, because so it's like you, you know, you need to figure out this first, this relationship first, before you can, you know, meet singles. So I hope that makes sense because there's obviously something going on here and, you know, meeting someone new isn't going to solve your problems. So take what resonates, but, um, and again, like, you know, maybe you're not, you don't have the label of a relationship, but still, like, if you have, like, this intense connection with someone, 
you know, and there's like things that need to be worked on or worked out. I mean, it's probably, you know, not, you know, I'm not seeing someone new coming in because it's like you have to work through this one first. And this playfulness too, for some of you, could be about you just having fun on your own or with friends or with family. And maybe like once you're, you know, away from the situation, you could assess what you're truly wanting. And maybe for some of you with this guilt, you're feeling guilty because for whatever reason, maybe you feel tied to this person or chained to this person. So maybe, you know, you live together or you have a kid or you, um, you know, or you feel that they, you know, love you so much and you feel like guilty for letting that go. I mean, it could go different ways. So take what resonates. But if you do feel guilt in this connection, that's something you need to work on and think about because... Guilt is a lower vibration and fear and love are opposite vibrations. Fear is the lowest, love is the highest. So where do you feel guilt is? It's over here by fear, right? It's not here by love. So if you have guilt in your connection, you need to clear that out. And if you are holding on to someone because you feel guilty about leaving them, that's not a loving connection. That's not a loving relationship. That's not true love. And again, I'm not saying this, you know, you know, as judgment or to be mean, I'm saying this out of love so you could make the best decision possible for you. So, um, you know, take, again, take what resonates. Um, but, um, this, but yeah, like there are things that need to be worked out. And so maybe for now you just need some space and you do need to have some fun and just kind of go from there and just think what I, about what I said again, if this didn't make sense, you know, pick another pile. But if, you know, you are someone in a relationship, you do have to kind of question, is this the right one for you? So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now pile number six. Oh. Okay. So we have passion and magnetic and seductive quality surrounds you at present. Enjoy it. We have, it is important right now to take a step back and spend some time alone. Instead of placing your focus on another, now is the time to give to yourself. Okay, so we have 10 of cups, three of cups, and actually these two came out first. And then we have king of wands and knight of wands. Romance Angels, we have Retreat. It's time to disconnect from this, the world. We have Heart to Heart Conversations. And we have Express Your Love. Okay, Oracle of the Mermaids, we have Reflections. What you contemplate can actualize. Okay, and then from the Black Moon Astrology cards, I picked, I pulled out the signs and the elements to see what sign your my um, your person, your future partner, love might be. And when people ask what your sign is, that's just your sun sign. So if it doesn't have to be that, it could be one of the other influences in their chart, you know, one of the main ones, like their moon, their rising, their Venus, or it could just be the energy they embody. So you got Libra, I balance, and the earth element stability. So the earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Um, Libra is an air sign, so I mean they could always be another air sign like Gemini or Aquarius, but Libra was the one that came, you know, through. Um, so take what resonates. Again, it could be, you know, one of the main influences in their chart, or maybe it's just the energy they embody. Okay. Okay. So one thing to note is with this one saying focusing on yourself and not focusing on another and retreating. So this definitely is calling for you to do your own thing, live your life, and maybe like take your mind off of relationships or partnerships or wanting to be with someone because it is calling for you to have some you time. Um, because the thing is, is like, it is showing love coming through, but it's just kind of like you need, right now you need to not focus on that. Okay, and it's interesting because the king and the knight are both wands energy. So wands energy are normally fire energy. So the person could even have, be like an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius or have fire in their chart. So maybe they're, a, you know, a mix of like 
fire sign energy and Libra energy or fire sign energy and earth energy or all three. And with the king and the knight, I mean, that could be, it doesn't have to mean a male, it could be a female. And also I'm being drawn to with this, it could either be the king is the person and the knight is about like the movement, because sometimes the knight isn't about a physical person, it's about the movement and the wand's energy is coming in strong, it's coming in hot, it's fast. Um, with this three of cups and ten of cups, um, you could be meeting someone or had met someone at like a party or an event or a wedding or a gathering or through friends, um, you know, some kind of social setting. And, and some of you could, it could have been online. And there, you know, you did get the passion card. So again, like what I said about coming in hot with the Knight of Wands energy and the Ten of Cups, it does show this emotional fulfillment. So this, you know, this might be like a passionate connection coming in. But the thing is, is like you do have to remember. Okay, one thing I'm getting with the reflections is sometimes in other people, we're seeing a mirror of ourself. So, and this makes sense. Like, you know, we, you know, someone comes in our life and they're mirroring our own issues back at us, you know, to show us what we need to work on, what we need to heal. And, you know, for some of you, um, if you've seen my other videos that aren't pick a card, I do a lot of videos on Twin Flames and or Lightworkers. So whether it's actually your mirror soul, like your Twin Flame, or it could just be like, you know, a, another partner who, you know, has, you know, is mirroring certain things back to you. I'm getting for some of you, this is like the love you're finally wanting where you're like, you're getting what you're giving. And, and again, yeah, I'm getting drawn to like the, the cups energy, the emotion and the passion and the fieriness, but you would, you have to both remember that you do also need to talk <laughs> like with the heart to heart conversations, you know, this connection might be very like overpowering and not in a bad way, but in the sense that you have all this, you know, passion and, you know, love and, you know, energy, but you also do need to like talk to one another, get to know one another. And, and it's, you know, great to go ahead and express yourselves, you know, freely and, you know, share how you feel and express it, but you also do need to, you know, discover about each other and get to know each other in other ways. Um, so, you know, talking and finding out about each other. So, because also, like, if you're not doing this, you know, one or both of you could have certain expectations of this connection. And then, you know, you if you don't build this part up, you know, like the part, you know, like your mental compatibility, you know, your foundations, you know, and you just have all this, like, heat and, you know, it's, it you know, it might end up failing because you didn't have this groundwork, if that makes sense. So don't feel like you have to really, you know, don't just let yourself be overtaken by this. Yeah, enjoy this, but also at the same time, make sure there is a balance um, so you're not getting too carried away. And then later on, you might find out that you're both not on the same page because you never had those talks. You never really got to know each other. You, you never really made that connection you know, you, you know, you, if that makes sense. Okay. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Okay. Maybe too, this is something too, where once you meet this person or once you're involved with this person, um, whether, you know, you know them now or not, um, with the taking the step back and retreating and spending time alone, it could be that, um, not to say monitor your time, but um, you do want to make sure that you're balancing your life and having time for yourself and not just spending all your time with this person because um, you want a well-rounded, balanced life, you know, because you can't make another person your whole world if that, and your whole life. So make sure that you do, you focus also on your self-love and self-care 
and not just getting caught up on the heat with this person. So I think maybe that's where this is coming in, um, is that once you're in it, making sure that you still are you and you still have time for you and you still make sure that you're grounded and secure within yourself and happy with yourself and you're not just have, you know, have melded with this person so much that you, you know, you're not even an individual. And I don't know if that makes sense, but, you know, take what resonates. But, um, but yeah, I mean, definitely enjoy this passion, you know, this, you know, motion fulfillment coming in, but just, you know, be smart about it, you know, you know, make sure that you still live your life for you, you're happy with you, that you take time to get to know them, you know, you learn about them, you have those discussions about what you both want in life, about what you both, you know, need and want in a relationship. Um, so yeah, that is my pile number six, people. So my pile number seven, people. We have acceptance is the key to inner peace. At times, we must accept things as they are. There is no point trying to change that which is beyond our control. We have balance. Love is not always about agreeing just for the sake of it. A great relationship is one that both supports and challenges. Okay, and from the Chakra Wisdom Tarot, we have the Six of Swords, the Eight of Swords, the Six of Cups, and the Moon. Okay, Romance Angels. We have separation, forgiving and learning, and unrequited love. And Oracle of the Mermaids, we have M. Rama, Wonder Voyage, Crossing Deep Waters, Pilgrimage, Journey of the Soul. And for the Black Moon Astrology cards, I pulled, I took out the um, signs to see maybe what sign, potential sign your par partner or love coming in will be. And it doesn't have to be their sun sign, which is when people ask what your sign is, that's your sun sign. It could be another main influence in their chart, like their moon, their rising, their Venus, or it can maybe just be about the energy they embody. So for this pile, um, we got Sagittarius or Pisces. So Pisces is a water sign. So, you know, also the other water signs, Cancer, or Scorpio, and then Sagittarius is a fire. So the other are Leo and Aries. So take what resonates. Okay. So for my pile number seven people, <coughs> there's not really someone showing that's coming as a new partnership or new love yet. And the reason is, is because you have, things that you have to work out on your own. Um, like with this pilgrimage, this journey of the soul, this wonder voyage, you know, you have, you know, some work to do. And what I mean by that is like your inner work. Um, and there's, you know, definitely these wounds from the past. So with forgiving and learning, you know, when this comes up, it could be about past partners. It could also be about familial wounds. Um, it could even be ancestral. Um, I mean, it could be a lot of things. It could be past lives. So there's these lessons that you're, you know, are still integrating or learning from. And there's these patterns, these cycles that you still have to, you know, break. So you're in this process of forgiving and learning. And, and it's like, and be okay with that because we all have, you know, karma to clear. We all have lessons to learn. We all have, you know have had things blocking us, you know, in love and, you know, we all have different wounds. So, you know, don't feel like, oh, why did I get this pile? Because, you know, this is, you know, just something, you know, we all have to forgive someone at some point. We all learn our lessons. We all have, you know, heartbreaks or so, um, just know that you're kind of in that space right now where you're still trying to deal with that energy. And maybe for some of you, you haven't dealt with that. So this is where your chance to kind of delve deep and really, you know, work through things. And when I heard that, and when I say here, I'm getting it as an intuitive thought, I was getting this kind of thing, like, you know, like wringing out a rag and like the water coming out. So you're like having to like do this ring out 
like I'm and I just keep getting that motion that it's like all this is coming out because it's like you're having to work through it and that's okay be okay with this because if you get past this you know and you know you will it's just you know you have to go through the process and And this is maybe why you haven't had this balance. Because also, like, you got the moon card. And in this moon card, see how there's, like, the white wolf and then there's the black wolf. And and they're, you know, it's like the light side or the shadow side. Again, it's about balance. So for you, it's like you might still be dealing with shadow aspects of yourself as we all have and you still have to like integrate them you still have to like transmute that darkness into light so it's like you need to find this balance but you still have this heaviness that you need you know to release and clear if that makes sense and with this acceptance i'm getting it's that you need to accept what you're getting in this reading because i know you know, if you're looking for a singles love reading in this pile you get, of course, like I understand if you feel maybe disappointed, but this is going to help you in the long run. So accept that right now you just have some work to do and it's, you know, it's just not, I don't want to say it's not in the cards for you. It's just not showing up right now because the main focus is that you need to do this. And maybe by hearing this, this will kind of get you going to clear and heal and maybe you know a partner or love will come in sooner than you thought but like you know if maybe if you would have saw that oh someone's coming in you wouldn't have done your work and maybe this is is what is needed you know so with this separation there maybe is someone that you are in separation from so whether it's someone that you know you're taking a break from you kind of been on and off again with or it's someone that you know, you were dating and maybe they kind of went away or ghosted, but it's someone maybe that, you know, you're hoping will return. And with the unrequited love, and I don't want to say that whether they will or won't come back because it's still, I think, yet to be decided or you're not meant to know right now. But I feel like you... Part of maybe one of your lessons is about maybe feeling rejected or about, you know, you feel unworthy and that's why you're having certain lessons because it's trying to show you are worthy. But through these lessons where you feel unworthy or rejected, it's actually kind of, it's for, you know, your growth. So with unrequited love, you might feel sometimes that you... you know, with the separation, it, I feel like it wasn't on your side. It wasn't like you saying you needed a break. It was the other person. And you feel maybe like you're always the one maybe getting hurt. And the other person is the one walking away or saying, you know, saying goodbye or saying I need space. And, you know, that's kind of maybe like a pattern for you. Um, and that's something that you need to kind of get to the bottom to like, okay, why, where did this belief come from that, you know, I don't feel worthy or I feel, you know, rejected because you know it comes from somewhere so whether that's something you know from like a partner early on or that's you know from a learned behavior from family or society or whatever the case is um one thing I did get while I saw these cards was for some of you you might have daddy issues and again like I mean this doesn't have to mean just for you know females it could be for males as well and I mean take what resonates it's not going to be for everyone, but for some of you might have daddy issues. And, you know, if you have, you know, for whatever situation that is, you know, that, you know, definitely is going to influence your connection. So even if, you know, you're like, oh, well, you know, I, you know, why does that matter? Because, you know, I'm interested in, you know, women, whether you are a woman or you're a man, um, it still is going to impact you because, you know, say you know, you saw, you know, I'm not going to actually give a for instance because I don't want to affect you individually because you all will have a different story, but just see if any of you, you know, if you have any father wounds, think about that. Like, you know, do you have a loving, healthy connection to your dad? And if you don't, 
you have to kind of look at that. And then also you have to maybe look at your father's relationship with your mother and what, you know, and see if there's anything there. And again, for some of you, it's, it's not for everyone. It's just for some, but that was something that came through. Um, also, um, again, I'm getting like, you know, it's hard for you to walk away. The six of swords energy is about moving away, but you're stuck in this eight of swords energy where you're, like, you're not wanting to walk away. So even if you like know deep down, it's a smart thing. Like if someone asked for space, someone wanted a break or someone broke up with you, you know, it's like, obviously you do have to move on, but it's like you, you're carrying that with you. You're wanting to stay stuck. Um, and it's like with the, oh, and with the six of cups, you know, you keep thinking back to the past, but that's not serving you. Like if you're thinking about the past as in what is this pattern, you know, what from the past has, you know, got me into the situation? What can I take away? What can I learn from it? But if you're just thinking about past memories and about like, you know, or thinking about good times with them and why didn't it, you know work out in the sense of not at wanting the answers, but just getting st stuck in this energy of, oh my God, I miss them, you know, kind of thing. And it's okay to miss them. But if you're just too focused on wanting this back and you need to take a lesson from this situation and you're not doing that because you're just too much in your head about like about thinking of the good times and you might not be seeing the lessons there, if that makes sense. And with the moon card, things are hazing in the sense of it's not showing what is going to happen with maybe this person that you were thinking of while doing this reading. So if, you know, and that's not to say that all of you, you know, have this, um, I mean, there could be some of you who aren't thinking about someone, you know, or it could, you know, or, um, necessarily wanting someone back, but you could still be like stuck in like that energy where you still have to resolve things. But one thing I did get was with this energy, for some of you, this person could have been someone who is toxic. You know, they could have been someone that was a karmic partner. And that's why, because with my videos, you know, I'm, you know, like I, a lot of my videos are for twin flames, you know, light workers, you know, I want people, and it's not to say, you know, karmic partners do have their purpose. But with these love relationship readings, I'm really trying to help people, you know, to, you know, come together, you know, with the soulmate or with the twin flame or, you know, a divine counterpart, you know, if that's, and, you know, a higher vibrational relationship. So not to say that this person didn't have a, you know, there was something you were meant to do with that, you know, have that you were meant to have that connection is what I'm saying. But a karmic partner isn't one you want to stay with because it's not for your highest good. It's not going, it's not out of love. It's out of, you know, you're attracted to this person heavily because you know, because, and it's like, oh, I, I need this person in my life. And it's like, you do, but it's not because of love. It's because of lesson. It's because of growth. And I hope that makes sense. So for some of you, this could be that energy of, this is why this hasn't worked out because this isn't for your highest good. This, you have a better partner coming in, but you need to go away from this energy, if that makes sense. And for some of you, like maybe, you know, this person is a soulmate or is a good person and they're not, you know, toxic or whatever, but still like you, you know, still have some lessons to learn, you know? So say this is a, you know, maybe for a small portion of you, you could be a twin flame and you're in this period of separation, but you know, you <coughs> still have your lessons to learn. You're, you know, you're on, you know, you have more on your path to do. So you, you know, maybe you, um, you're more new to awakening and this is your first separation with them or, you know, I mean, again, take what resonates. So this might be about you seeing like this mirror reflection and you're trying to clear out these shadow aspects and not to, you know, and it, you know, transmute your darkness into light and then kind of learn because with the twin flame connection, you're ultimately about mirroring each other, any wounds, any hurts, anything that's keeping you from unconditional love. So, you know, it could go either way. It could be for some of you that are twin flames. It could be about you're in separation from them. You're just having to learn from this. You know, you need this energy to be, be alone and kind of learn from things and grow. And for some of you, this could have been a karmic partner. So either way, whatever such, and I think that's why maybe things are unclear because for some of you, it's one way and some of you, it's another way. And that's like a big difference. 
So just take what resonates, but know that for now, you, you know, you know, you should get out of this energy. You should be on your own for now. Stop glamorizing the past. Kind of learn your, from your lessons. You know, think about what is blocking you from love and think about, you know, what is getting in the way and just, um, and yeah, and just move forward. So for those of you um, with the Sagittarius and Pisces, this could be about some this, someone from your past since right now it's not showing someone new. And again, like, like I said earlier, it's not that to say that someone won't come in new. It's just like right now, um, or, you know, that person, if they were a twin flame, won't come back at some point. It's just showing right now. It's really, this re reading is really about you and doing your work. So I hope that resonated and, um, you know, everything I say, I say with love, um, and, you know, from my intuition and what I'm getting. Um, and again, with collective readings, you just need to take what you feel resonates and some of it, you know, like if it's hasn't happened yet, it could just, you know, keep it in the back of your mind and then later, or maybe later you'll, you know, you'll forget about it now and later something will happen and you'll be like, oh, I remember this from the reading. So, um, I send you all love and light and also, um, feel free to check out my pick a card readings on healing because I've noticed that like with my love reading, my last one that I did, it gets so much more views than my other readings. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, wanting to see love readings but also know that you know there are you know we do also need to think about our healing and you know pile number seven especially um it, you know it goes to show we do have you know blocks you know that we need to clear we do have healing we need to do we do you know have lessons that need to be learned so um do go look at the pick card healing readings because that could definitely help you in you know the area of love as well as other areas of life um, I also did one on your divine work, mission work, and our career. Um, and, and then also for any twin flames and our lightworkers, I post videos for each month as well as each full moon. So feel free to check those out, whatever one's called to you. And um, if you um, like this video, feel free to like it, share it, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on social media. And right now I am available for private readings as well. And I wish you all a great night, day, whatever it is where you are, and love and light.